This is a little bit different than I normally do. I'm normally doing uh, jobs on the house, like the bathroom floor and the staircase. So these bits were leftovers from different jobs over the years and they're getting in the way. So I decided to make a table for the front room. Um, it's thick slate. This used to be an old fire hearth. Um, there it is. And there are lump these lumps of oak are originally some uh, pillars outside a, a house. And uh, so this really, this video is just to show what troubles I had with it, and there are many, and half of them were because this weighs about 150 kilos, so that's one of them. And uh, this is how I did it. Because I didn't have any machinery or a workshop to do it in, I had to do it in the back garden with a 9 inch circular saw and just followed a piece of wood. The damn thing was so heavy I had to get my son in to help me around with it. And after I cut it, as you can see, I didn't keep it upright, the blade. So we have to do, we're going to have to do some more work to try and grind it down. First of all, I used a flapper wheel. That didn't work. So I gave up and marked out the holes for the drilling. Now, I thought this was a good idea. This drill bit was designed for a wet system and I haven't got the wet system and I haven't got the holder for it. So I used a bit of ply. As you can see, the, ring, the diamond ring at the end, the cutter pit, is bigger, wider than the actual sleeve of the drill. And as soon as I went through the uh, ply, of course it could go where it likes. And it did. Right, that's the eight holes done. Right, now back to this edge. As you can see, these are the other three edges are polished, highly polished. And this, unfortunately, is my unhighly polished edge. There's also a bevel on the top edge that I need to do as well. Because I had to cut the edge off the slate, the other three sides are polished. So I to try and make it somewhere near the polished look of the other side. I first start with this thing. It's a, di it's a diamond, impregnated with diamond. And it brought it down quite good. It took all the big lumps off. And then I saw this online it's actually supposed to go on an angle grinder but my angle grinder's got a different thread than this so i've stuck a bit of barrier threaded bar and then i can put that into the chuck of my drill and then give that a go i haven't got any other way of doing it with that set <coughs> it comes with this set uh, it comes with this pad and it also and it's velcroed on all these got velcro on the back and if you on the front on the back of them they got the uh, grit size it goes from 50 100 150 300 500 8 thousand 1500 2000 and 3000 so I'm starting with 50 and uh, see what happens uh, also another problem might come up with is the holes that I drilled in the slate were supposed to be just for this bar but unfortunately he's a bit slack so what I've come up with is it will just slot inside a copper pipe 15 mil copper pipe and then that actually goes in there really snug so as when you look at it there's going to be a brass centre with a small copper ring around it, which I think will look just nice anyway. But we shall see. The two oak squares have been slightly sandblasted, so I wanted to keep that and I used this wire wheel and it brought up the wood really nice. Uh, after I did all that, I measured it and they were two different sizes just smart so I had to cut them both to the same size 
So as you can see this rebate, it looks like, it gives the image that it's hovering. So, and I wanted to make that a little bit bigger uh, without you seeing underneath. So I made it about 15 mil. And this is me cutting more. And of course, the saw didn't go all the way through, so by hand, and then I planed it down a bit, just to make it nice and flat and a bit of sanding. This is me cutting uh, the extra depth that I wanted, and as you can see, it gives a bit better look of floating. Right, I cut the two holes for the brass bar, it's antique brass bar. and uh, dry fitting it. I actually used extreme glue in it and it didn't hold it really well, unfortunately. Okay, after three coats of polyurethane varnish, it's made by Plastic Coat. It uh, gave it a nice, made the color come out too, as well as the grain, and a good use of a golf ball basket. Right, now because of this problem with the hole, I'm having to glue the brass bar inside the copper sleeve and I'm using aridite glue. It's some uh, pretty good stuff. Because of the brass bar going down at an angle because I didn't drill the hole vertically, I'm having to shake the top so when I put the brass bar with the copper sleeve through the hole, it doesn't stick up above the surface of the top. So I'm having to grind the shape to match each hole. I'm just dry fitting the rods to make sure that they fit in because once I glue it in, it's staying. Just drill in the locating holes for the rods in the oak blocks. Do bring up, make sure they're clear. I don't want the rods coming through the top. And I'm gluing in the rods using lollipop stick. Just try not to get too much of it onto the top itself. And I'm using in the end, I use to stop the rods slipping back down from the hole, I use some gaffer tape to try and stick the top of it to hold it in place. It kind of worked. The rods are all now dry, and uh, the hard bit is trying to get it onto the blocks without pushing the rods through the top. And this is it, finished. Uh, I've sealed it twice, and as you can see, some stainings come through for some reason. I don't know why, but there you go. Um, if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, if you want to uh, subscribe or if you want to, uh, any questions about it just put it in the comments below thanks for watching cheers